The Assembly will now hear an address from His Excellency Mr. Luis Lacalle Pou, President of the Eastern Republic of Uruguay. I ask protocol to please escort His Excellency. Au nom de l'Assemblée Générale. On behalf of the General Assembly. I have the honour to welcome His Excellency Mr. Luis Lacage Pou, President of the Eastern Republic of Uruguay, and to invite him to address the Assembly. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My greetings to the President of the General Assembly, which are also extended to the United Nations Secretary General, to the heads of state and government, to official delegations, and to this organization that has worked so much to hold this assembly today. Today, once again, I am here speaking on behalf of my country. I am here speaking on behalf of my compatriots. We have come here to this forum where more than 190 representatives come to deliver their message from different cultures, different governments, different ideologies, different social situations, different economic, climatic and geographical situations. However, the fact that all of us are here means that somewhat a long time ago we agreed to work together to achieve the same rights, obligations and principles. on international law with not much coercive power, where often the same bar is not applied to the larger countries than is applied to smaller ones. We are back here at the Assembly with a positive vision, an optimistic vision of humanity. However, we objectively must say we live in a better world because, of course, nevertheless, we still have challenges to overcome. We are convinced that globalization, ICT, artificial intelligence, real-time communication, all of these things are tools that help for integration and development for our people. Of course, if these tools are used well. We are seeing a growing responsibility of uh, global leaders. Uh, earlier, I heard the United Nations Secretary General emphasize this matter. We are living in a world of a lot of words without actions. We're here. A uh, global leader can bring about consequences with just his words, an international conflict, uh, banking matters, etc., etc. Uh, Uruguay has come here to this assembly with a full, stable democracy, with full respect for institutions and the law, which is an historic tradition in our country. And despite the pandemic, despite the Russian invasion, despite different climatic factors, our, country, our country's economy has recovered to what it was before the pandemic. Employment has improved, unemployment has decreased, we have historic public investment in infrastructure, and significant uh, direct foreign investment has been received, and a lot has been invested in our country, which shows the significant amount of trust. Our public finances are in good order. Inflation as, uh, is at an 18-year low. Taxes have been able to be decreased. And at the same time, we have undertaken reforms that had been urgent for a long time, such as educational reform and reform to social security. The Uruguayan people have a responsible sense of freedom. 
Today, when I was writing some of my speech, I remembered what I said here in September 2021. The end of my speech said that the pandemic had uh, reminded us that all of us were one. And for this reason, we are all one. And so, based on that, I wish to refer to the responsible uh, freedom, international responsible freedom, liberty. It is clear that our well-being as countries, our independent countries, is intrinsically linked to the common good. We need to be aware of this, accept it, and act as a result. Since early on, a lot of heads of state here have referred to the environment. I belong to a country that was uh, classified and given the name Natural Uruguay a few years ago. Renewable energies in our country uh, represent more than 90%. We have significant reforestation. We have sustainable production processes. And I could continue with a long list that uh, underpins this concept of Natural Uruguay. After many years of uh, statements and uh, commitments made, the international community really understood that the economy and the environment were intrinsically linked to one another. Uruguay, a few months ago, uh, issued a sustainable bond that is based on uh, prizes and punishments, uh, penalties, uh, depending on the level of compliance with the Paris Agreement. And here, I wish to draw your attention to the fact that we are convinced, and we understand that this system of uh, benefits and penalties should be applied to international loans, for example, market access, quotas, and tariffs. It is not just uh, our vocation to uh, punish uh, lack of compliance, but rather to reward those who engage in processes that are environmentally friendly and that are sustainable. In this way, look, just like it is when we are children, there are incentives to improve. And this would mean that nations would make more efforts in their domestic economies and also globally. In this same vein, I wish to share a situation that my country is going through with you, and I'm sure your nations are probably going through the same thing. I think we can call this the sin of doing things well. And what am I talking about when I talk about this sin of doing things well? well my country has achieved a level of significant human and economic development. And thanks to reaching these standards, often we uh, do not benefit from systems of cooperation, from um, preferences, for example, uh, instruments for uh, international trade support. And, of course, I would be remiss not to share the uh, spirit with which these mechanisms were created, but I do think that we need to take a fresh look at them, because often countries grow and then they lose access to these conditions. I wish to make it clear that Uruguay is not coming here to beg or uh, make exaggerated uh, claims. However, simply what I was referring to, uh, responsible international liberty, I think that it's necessary to act with justice. If uh, we do things well, well, we should, should act as a consequence of this, and this means nothing less and nothing more than improving access to opportunities. Just to wrap up, because I know you've had a long day. I wish once again here at this forum, like others have done, to firmly condemn the Russian invasion of Ukraine and express 
our solidarity to the Ukrainian people. Further, I wish to agree with the Secretary General, the United Nations Secretary General, and raise our voice against authoritarian populism that are bringing uh, impoverishment to their peoples, uh, violating human rights and condemning current and future generations. Once again, perhaps here we should engage in a mea culpa, because often the ab absence of a robust and effective reaction from the international community has uh, led to us not avoiding these types of situations. Thank you very much. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Uruguay and I request 